Hi, Charles Severance here. I'm at CERN in Geneva, Switzerland, one of the world's preeminent high-energy physics facilities. We were lucky enough to talk to Robert Caillou, one of the co-founders of the World Wide Web. The big collaborations at, at CERN, and Stephen here is, uh, is a member of one of them, uh, had people spread all over the world and use CERN as the infrastructure to do the experiments. And so, um, obviously, the, the whole of high energy physics has been a sort of miniature information society since way back when, uh, as soon as there were networks, essentially. And so, uh, because we have this need for spreading documentation around, uh, we built these things like centralized databases. There was CERN doc, you know, you could use it, but whatever. Uh, we had a, a, a well, we still have a large database of um, high energy physics articles uh, kept by Stanford. Uh, and you could get at it before the web by knowing exactly what computer to log into over the network, blah, 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 blah. When, when the web came, all that necessity of knowing which computer to go to, what to say to that computer and so forth, just disappeared. You know, you, people put up these pages with their links and you could just follow links and get to, to places where you wanted to be and, and find everything. Uh, and it was also all in the same format, so that was very important to that. You know, we broke this uh, proprietary commercial system of vertical markets, which, you know, <laughs> don't let you get at anything except if you stay with this particular company or with that particular company. So that, that horizontal split, that cut that we made between the browsers on top and the uh, databases at the bottom was, I think, essential uh, to make it useful for us, but also to make it useful for everybody else. Right? And uh, so that was that was what, what it was like in the beginning. And Tim uh, and I we did this all on this next machine here uh, in about 1990. So the first server was up about 1990. The first uh, end of 1990. The first uh, uh, server in the United States came up about a year later uh, at Stanford because of that database that I was talking about before. You and Tim feel like this was the big one, or it was just uh, business? Well, <coughs> in a sense, of course, uh, as I always say, we called it World Wide Web in 1990, and, and Tim had, in fact, a name like that just before that. So uh, th there was, in fact, no way of building it smaller than the Internet already was, and the Internet was everywhere. So there was no way we could build it smaller. But uh, the thing that we probably did not expect or did not, aim for definitely in the beginning um, at least was to have this be uh, useful outside the community of academics and internet people that uh, existed then. See the, the internet came outside the academic world only uh, what after I would say also after 94, 94. right? That's 94 after is 94. roughly what I think of the beginning of the yeah, n n 94 is what I call the, the, the year of the web. It's when we had the first conferences where, when, you know, Mosaic got off the ground, really, and, and when commerce started to notice it and companies began to be formed and so on and so forth, exclusively with that in mind. And that was only then. Uh, before that, it was mainly universities and academics. Gopher was simpler and easier to install and easier to populate. And that explained it easier success for a while, because both took off at about the same time. Uh, and because the web was somewhat more difficult, it took somewhat longer. But Gopher became also integrated in the web browsers almost instantaneously. And so, you know, after that, uh, after, after a short while, you, you saw what you could do with the web and what you could do with Gopher, you went for the web. But it was easy, much easier to install Gopher. This is a very, which is why it had a, a sort of bump where it, it uh, went ahead of the web for a while. Um, <coughs> the same is true of Mosaic. Mosaic was just uh, no good, but easier to install, right? And so it went ahead of what we were trying to do. I mean, we, we were completely killed in the browser uh, environment because what we tried to do with our browsers was more difficult uh, than what Mosaic was trying to do. And so, you know, um, this proved that a better thing sometimes gets killed or takes much, much longer to come up because the easier thing, so like a virus, you know, <laughs> outgrows the other one. I think that the, the real problem was that um, this development system is so much better than anything else that 
exporting what we had here to any other platform took an order of magnitude more time. And uh, the, and for example, every time you clicked here, you had another window. Right? Every time you clicked on a diagram, you had a diagram in another window. When you clicked on a map, you got the map in PostScript, scalable, perfectly printable, and so on and so forth. You try to port that to another system, you, you go berserk. And this is the reason why in Mosaic you had only one window, and every time you click, you replace the content of that one window, which was not what we wanted. Every time you see a page, you got the images in line, so you scroll, and they're all gone. And so this was all not what we wanted. It's horribly complicated for the user, and, and it's not efficient, but you know, it was the easiest way to do it on the next system. And so you know, there you go. So that thing spreads, and uh, and if you want to make, I mean, you know, there's a big difference between making an editor and something that just puts up a page and you can't do anything with that. So um, our system from 1990 was also the editor. I mean, I started. It's only after uh, Next stopped making hardware, and I had to go back from a Next to a Macintosh mm -hmm. uh, that I had to learn HTML. Right? I mean, before we produced all the documentation and the stuff, but we never saw any. We never saw any HTML. We never saw any URLs, right? Because you linked by saying link this to that, not by typing in a URL. Right? There was a special window you could call up in which you could type a URL if you, if you needed to, but it wasn't the usual thing. I mean, this, this navigation part which says HTTP da 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 da. You know, I learned all that the hard way afterwards that you have to use that because you've lost that system, right? The, the interesting thing though is, is that I see I find HTML a glorious language. Now I'm not I'm not the average user. Uh, but I like nice. to write it. I mean I, I nice. enjoy it almost yeah, as a word okay. processing. It's like tech. It's, it's like yeah, right, right. It's exactly as bad as tech. Right. That's exactly what it is. It's exactly as bad as tech. I mean can you imagine I mean the the headings have levels which are absolute? True. You need a plus certainly what need. um I mean, come on. No. The HTML was, we, we just didn't have, must realize that we were never more than four people here, Tim and myself and a student each, okay? So things like uh, putting in serious effort into uh, thinking about HTML was a low priority business. And on, then, of course, by the time it, there was time to do that, it had spread beyond repair, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of like Unix, right? Uh, right, but of course we have... like a virus. Uh, yeah, uh, in a sense, we we um, we have XML coming now, fortunately. So that'll that'll help. Uh, this machine here, uh, it's um, well, it's more than ten years old now. Uh, it's got it runs Unix, uh, but it has Unix with a, a nice visual interface. It had some other interesting things which was the, which permitted us to do the development of the web in such a small time, such a s short time. Um, that was, it had a completely, uh, or it has a completely object-oriented development system in which there is already supplied as part of the library an editable text object and that was what Tim used to make the first browser. Um, and this, this was all nice because it, it got us there very quickly and then we realized that, you know, somehow the real world uh, uses these horrible machines and, uh, you know, porting it from here to make it available on these horrible machines uh, in the same elegant way is an enormous amount of work. But halfway through 93, I think, uh, we, we made a last effort in outputting browsers that were also geared to becoming editors, but then there was just no hope.